want to um, hold your name this morning, but I do believe that um, that there is a word from the Lord for those that are in a place to receive. How many people want to be a better Christian? Amen. That you just can't stop at salvation. Salvation is not just about saving your soul, but it's also about how do I live after I've had my encounter and confess who God is. And so there, there's one thing that we want to deal with this morning, and there'll be a part two version, um, prayerfully if the Spirit says so, at 1130. So we greet each and every one of you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for our officers, our musicians, ushers. Thank God for our senior saints, our mothers, Evangelist Bell. We honor you. Um, if you're visiting with, we thank God um, that you are with us on this morning. We pray that something is said to help you on this journey called life. Um, if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book. Go to your glossary there of Philemon. Philemon, 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 whichever one you, if you get the Hebrew, it's the book right before you get the Hebrew. It's only one chapter, Philemon. Philemon. I don't have to say which chapter because it's only one. I want you to follow along with me as I read aloud, <clears throat> and I'm going to be reading out of the um, New King James Version this morning. Beginning at verse number 10, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains, who once was unprofitable to you, but is now profitable, listen to this, to you and to me. I'm sending him back. You therefore receive him, that is, my own heart, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. But without your consent, I wanted to do something. I, I, but, but without your consent, I wanted to do nothing that your good deed might not be by compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. He said, I ain't going to make you do it. I need you to voluntarily do this. For perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose, that you might receive him forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If then... You count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. But if he has wronged you or owe anything, put that on my account. Listen to what Paul says. I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay, not to mention to you that you owe me, even your own self beside. Yes, brothers. Let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. You may be seated. I just want you to look at your neighbor because we're going to grow this morning. Amen. I should look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, practice forgiveness. <laughs> practice forgiveness. The whole purpose of understanding in its totality what salvation is, is you have to understand that when Christ died, 
that when the soldier pierced him in the side, the payment for your sins came through the blood of Jesus. That this is what happens according to Romans, that when you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus, that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says that thou shalt be saved. Understand what salvation is, is salvation says that I believe that my past and present and future sins are all covered by the blood, that I am forgiven, but even in the spirit of being forgiven, I must also learn how to forgive. That what stops us from growing and what stops unity in families and unity in the household of faith and unity in marriage is we like to hold on to stuff. That when somebody tick us off, we don't know how to let it go. We don't know that if I hold on to it, I, I won't grow like I I'm supposed to grow. And I can't get the release of the spiritual blessings that God has in store for me. We have to learn how to be quick. That's what the Bible said, quick to forgive. Another scripture says that if God forgave us, then we ought to forgive one another. And I think that it's time out that we stop talking about how much God has forgiven us, that we really have the spirit to forgive one another. Can I bless you real good that forgiveness is not about the person that you think you're holding hostage, but forgiveness is about setting yourself free. That if you, if you could remember that there are still things that we are holding on that people said to us, said about us, did to us, people that owe us and won't pay us, that we hold on to it. And every time we see them, we get a sick feeling in our stomach. Yeah, that if they walk down the same side of the street, we'll cross the street to keep from speaking. It is a spirit of unforgiveness. And can I bless you real good? Unforgiveness is a sin. Hello, somebody. That when I cannot forgive, just be, and listen, just because you forgive a person does not mean that you have to receive them and be the same way you were before they offended you. Watch, watch, watch what I'm saying. Because a lot of times what we think is forgiveness means they still got to eat at your house. That No, that's not what forgiveness said. But there are cases within the Holy Writ that there has been forgiveness, and not only was there forgiveness, but there was also reconciliation. And reconciliation is now Paul writing to this man by the name of Philemon. When you read the first nine chapter, Paul admonishes him for the love and how he walks in the faith. And Philemon himself is a believer. He's one of the leaders in the church. But Philemon has an issue, and his issue is the fact that one of his slaves... Onesimus has now not only escaped from him and left him, but if you read the other nine verses, what you find out is he stole from him. God, anybody ever had somebody to steal from you? And then every time you see them, all you can think about is what they, that's what, that's where Philemon is. Philemon is out of play that he says, you know what? I took care of him good. I took care of him godly. And out of all I did for him, Out of all I've done, he going to turn around and steal from me. But, but watch this. He leaves as a person that has escaped being a prisoner. And he runs into a man by the name of Paul. Everybody, y'all know who Paul is. Paul is responsible for writing over three of over two-thirds of the of the New Testament. He runs into Paul, and when he runs into Paul, his life changes. Y'all, y'all forget, y'all miss it. He steals from his master. He escapes slavery. And he ends up running into Paul. And what Paul says is Paul now writes. Philemon, and he tells Philemon, guess what? You know that joker that offended you? He ain't the same joker with me as he was with you. No, okay, watch this. He says, while we're looking at the people that hurt us and offend us, can I bless you? If you are preordained, it was supposed to happen. Can I prove it? 
No, 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 no. Wait a minute, Keith. You mean to tell me all this hurt, all the pain, all the disappointment, all the problem, all the turmoil, all the chaos, it was supposed to happen because we are predestinated. And what Paul says to Philemon is, stop looking at Onesimus as if he's the problem. Onesimus, here's the first point, Onesimus' plan was a purpose. Can I show it to you? Watch, watch. Y'all got your Bibles open. What, listen to what he says. In verse 12, he says, I'm sending Onesimus back. I need Onesimus to come back to where he messed up. He says, now, but wait, listen, I, I guarantee we have had opportunities to reconcile with people not even knowing that God is sending them back and it ain't even about them. It's about where are you in your walk with the Lord? Are you really toting and carrying and portraying the spirit of Christ? Are, are you really ready to forgive and let go so that God can do something in you? Why, why? He said, listen, I'm sending them back. And even though your flesh says, don't have nothing to do with him. Paul says, I ain't commanding you. He said, but you need to consider when he come back, receive him. God, that's a big pill to swallow. You don't took my money, and you look at me as if I owe you. And the Lord says, not only are you going to come back, but for me to receive you. And when he says receive him, when you look that word up, what that word receive mean, it means embrace him. Oh, God, that's big right there. That I have to let my flesh get crucified so that the spirit of the Lord shine. And even folk that I don't like in my flesh I ought to be able to love and forgive them in my spirit. And the sad reality of it is we got to stop being fake. No, no, no. The Bible says speak every man the truth to his brother. What, what does that mean, Keith? That means when somebody offends you, don't go around telling somebody else. No, come on, talk to me if you will this morning. I'm finna get out your way. No, no. Do The Bible said if you have a fault and you so spiritual, not religious, not, not churchy. He said, and you're spiritual. He says, restore such a brother. Show them how much God you got in you. Even if you don't see the God you have in you, in them, you have to free yourself. Because if the longer you let it fester, the more the enemy gets to play on your mind and say, you ought to do this. You ought to put them on black. You ought to throw them under the bus. You ought to put them on social media. But what the Bible said is what we're trying to get to. Paul says you got to receive them. Y'all with me? He said, you, you, you not only... Do, am I sending him back? But I need you to rescind him, receive him. Don't just receive him in your flesh. Receive him in your heart. Yeah. He didn't mean to do it. Receive him in your heart. But when you get to verse 15, yeah, go to verse 15. I'm going to show you something. And, and this literally, Evangelist Bell, this blew my mind. He says, for perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose. He, <laughs> maybe you had to get hurt. Because there was purpose behind your pain. God, y'all. Nobody likes to get deliberately hurt. But if you can find out what is the purpose behind my pain. Listen, I found, I found out that pain is really what helps us grow. Because it shows us who we are in him. Because if we had our way, we'll bust the window out the car. We'll accidentally walk by with the keys in our hand because we want them to hurt like we hurt it. Come on. I want you to feel like I feel. 
that, that when you lied on me, now I'm going to lie on you. But, but, but an eye for an eye and a two for a two is not the way Jesus said. If he slapped you on your right cheek, you turn the other cheek. Oh, I know, listen, look, everybody looking crazy now, Eric. Say, say what, Key? You mean if, if they hit me, show them I got so much God in me to turn the other cheek? Why? Do I turn the other cheek? You have to go back to the book. He says, vengeance. So if I am in God, I am quick to forgive, and I don't have to pay you back, because if I pay you back, God says I ain't got nothing to do with it. But if I just release you and put you in the hand of an almighty, all-powerful God, God said, I'll deal with them. So we forget, we forgive, because there's a purpose. And listen, listen. The purpose for Philemon is this. The purpose proved whether or not he is who he say he is in Christ. Folk had to hurt you because you jump, you shout, you lift your hands, you scream, and you holler. But when somebody offends you, can you still jump, scream, holler, shout, dance, and talk about how good God is? Or does revenge play a part on your mind because you can't forgive? Listen, you you listen. You can forgive and not forget, but don't let your forgetting hinder what God is trying to do in your life. And His whole purpose is you take your pain and turn it into fertilizer. Listen to what He said. He says, "Well, maybe." It happened, perhaps it happened to fulfill a purpose. Have you ever noticed when you're at the pinnacle and all them sunny days come back to back and all of a sudden the bottom drops out, it serves a purpose. Every, everybody is not going to treat you right. That does not mean you can't treat everybody right. Y'all can pray with me. It's, it's okay. You, you ain't got to look at Pastor don't lost his mind. No, we're trying to move to a spiritual level because it is the flesh. God, it's the flesh that holds grudges. It's the flesh that wants revenge. It's the flesh that think about ways to get back. It is your flesh. And when we get so spiritual that we can bring our fleshly way upon the subjection, then we can do just like Philemon against this man that he had a problem with. Yeah, you stole it, but guess what? God going to replace it. So not only does he deal with the fact that there. There is a purpose behind pain. There's a purpose behind persecution. There's a purpose but why behind why God uses people to hurt you because God is trying to push you and not hinder you or keep you in the same place. He's trying to push you closer to it so that you really can trust him. How is it that you can trust him with your health? Trust him with keeping your children safe. Trust him with protecting and providing. Why is it that he can't trust you with the spirit of forgiveness? Watch this. Let me ask you a question. I want you to cl close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes for one second. Can you think of at least one person that hurt you a long time ago that is still hurt today? If you can, lift your hand. Everybody keep your eyes closed. If you can, lift your hand. If you can, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can I tell you how to grow in the Lord? Forgive them. Because pain comes to do one thing, one or two things. Either it comes to imprison you or it comes to show you the liberty that you can have through Christ Jesus. Y'all with me? You can open your eyes. And the sad reality of it is some people didn't raise their hand because they don't want you to know that they're still living in unforgiveness. Listen, you ain't got to raise your hand. The people that raise their hand, they're not admitted to me. They're admitted to themselves, and they're admitted to God. Now, you can sit there if you want to, but can I bless you real good? God knows. 
No, 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 no. While man looking at how you act and how you respond, God looking at your heart. And there are, there are those of us that have held on to stuff so long and we're wondering why I haven't been blessed above, above measure. It's because I'm walking in a spirit that I can't forgive because I'm missing my purpose trying to hold on to stuff that but forgetting those things which are behind me. This is what Paul said. Paul said in order for me to get there, I have to press towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ. In other words, I can't worry about what's back there. I got to forgive and keep it moving. Don't blame them why you are where you are. Blame yourself because you can't get over it. Tell your neighbor to get over it. Okay, let me, I got to move on. He says, not only is there a purpose, but in verse 16, he says, when you figure out the purpose, then you're willing to deal with the pardon. Here, here it is. Verse 16. He says, no longer. He said, I need you to receive him. He said, don't receive him as he left. He left a slave. Y'all with me? He says, but more than a slave, but receive him as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Y'all didn't see what happened. He went from being a slave to one that obtained salvation. God, y'all missed that. In other words, he said, you can, you can, you can forgive him. Because God don't convicted him, and as much as I need him to stay and minister to me, I'm going to send him back because he was a curse before, but he'll be a blessing now because God can change and save anybody. Keith, how do you know? Look at all these misfits in this room. If God can forgive and save us, People that have offended us that we don't, we have not forgiven and let them go. The same God that died on the cross at Calvary, the same one that bled and said, where there is blood, there is remission of sin. The same blood that you're covered up under, he can cover them too. This is what Paul is telling them. He says, he says, Philemon, Onesimus left. A sinner, but he came back a saint. Don't expect the same person that left be the same person that come back. Okay. He might have on that same clothes. He might have the same hairdo. He might have the same walk and the same talk. But what God has done, God has done on the inside because what he deals with, he said, don't just receive him in the flesh based on what you see. He says, but if God is in you, receive him in the Lord. And can I tell you, we reject a lot of people because they don't look like we look. They don't know the cliches. Their dresses are too short. They expose too much. Can, can I bless you real good? All of us didn't always wear church clothes. Okay. And can I bless you? When you put more emphasis on materialism, you take away spiritualism. That, that listen, I can't, let, just because she wear pants don't mean she going to hell. Just because he doesn't have on a tie and he wore his tennis shoe does not mean he's going to hell. God, y'all ain't going to pray with me this morning. And a lot of people are stuck in tradition and religion and they're missing the spirituality part of their walk. The walk with God is not about tradition or religion or what you wear. There has to be a personal, you know, there has to be a personal relationship based on spirituality and that's on the inside. Let them wear what they want to wear. Do I approve of it? No, not in my flesh. But you came to him just as you was too. Your dress didn't always drag the flow. Come on. All your pants wasn't always baggy. 
Stop wearing them. Maybe because they don't make your size no more. <laughs> and the sad reality is we put so much on what tradition says. What is church clothes? Y'all come on, pray with me, no? What, 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 huh? Y'all heard he said don't say. All it talks about is modest. Y'all come on. And folk will hold grudges against folk based on what they see. Okay. Does this make me any more saved than you? Does this mean I'm more forgiven than you? No. It, it doesn't. Just because I stand here. Don't mean, oh God, let me go there because I'm going to help you. Don't mean I'm going to heaven anyhow. There are going to be some preachers that bust hell. You, you want to know why? Because they don't know how to pardon anybody. You know what pardon means? Pardon means to take away, to blot out, to forget about it. If you're holding unforgiveness, forget about it. You can't receive if you don't release. This is what, this is what Paul is telling Philemon. He says, listen, I know you're mad because he took your money. Forget about it. Pardon him. Forgive him. Let, let, let that go because the God that you serve, the cattle is his. The silver is his. The gold is his. Isn't that what the words say? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. He, he says, listen, if you forgive, let it go. God has some stuff. He'll never run out of stuff. You, you don't believe me? God's so rich. Lorenzo, watch, watch how rich God is. God's so rich, pay that God says, listen, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Well, Keith, why haven't I got my riches? I'm glad you asked. Why haven't you let it go? No, no, y'all got to hear me. You have to make room to receive, and God ain't going to bless you as long as you're holding on to men that really don't serve a purpose in your life. Am I making sense to anybody? And now, now I'm going to say this. Every one of us in here need to check to make sure we're not walking in unforgiveness. No, no, no. Well, they need to call and tell me. I'm sorry, no, 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 those that are in Christ, it, listen, swallow your pride. Watch this, because, because pride will lead you to destruction. Swallow your pride. Be the bigger person in Christ. Yep, I know your flesh going to battle. I ain't going to do nothing. But if you want the life that Christ talked about, the abundant life, you have to let some stuff go. How did I do it? I practice. Forgiveness. No, no. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to let it go. Be quick. Listen, Grandma even said, sometimes you have to give up. Oh, y'all Grandma said that too? The right for, and sometimes you do. Married folks, sometimes you have to say I'm sorry when you know you always right. No, 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 no. Listen, do you know why God always talks about forgiveness? It's because forgiveness brings peace. So when you say, I'm sorry, no, no, and you got to really mean it. When you say that, you're saying it for peace's sake, even though you can prove why you're right. You ever notice where there is unforgiveness? You ever notice it's always over something that is so minute. It really don't matter until you don't see it like I see it. Then it's a problem 
because now I got to prove to you why you need to think like me. Here's the solution. Let this mind, which is also, y'all know, y'all know some of the, in the last seven words, you know what Christ said that was so key for the church? Father, what? Forgive who? Who is them? When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, this is what he says. After he acknowledged God and his dwelling place, and then he said, and forgive us. As we. Y'all missed it. Which means if I don't forgive you, how can I ask God to forgive me? And forgive us as we. So what happens if I ask him to forgive me? But I won't forgive Deacon Ricky. How can you expect God to do for you what you're not willing to do for others? Every man in here tell you, especially ones that's married, for Pete's sake and the sake of love, we have had to swallow our manly pride with them brides. <laughs> no, no, no. We have, because I don't know a man under the sound of my voice that don't have pride. And pride will cause you to miss what God has for you if you are afraid to say two words. I'm, I'm for the for the sister. And it is important. Now listen. I even teach my grandchildren because they got this thing now when they say, I say, say I'm so sorry. And we laugh, but we say it too. We already know they don't mean it. Because forgiveness is more than just saying. It's an action. Can, can I go there real quick? Some, some, of, the, some of the things that I hear um, from some people that, that I'm trying to help them through the Bible, work through some stuff, they always can point out what happened with the spouses or with the significant other, but they never say. Just come on, talk to me if you will. Because what I understand about friendship and relationship, the uh, mom and them used to say it take two to tangle. So, so if you can tell me what he did or what she did, uh, tell me what you did. And one of the challenges is this. If you say you forgive, why when we have another disagreement? Why you, if you forgave me, why you got to keep on? Come, come on, y'all. Y'all y'all don't know nobody like that, but but why you got to keep on telling me what happened in 1999? Because if you forgave me, you're no longer holding that over my head. Yeah, am, am, am I? So if I'm pardoned, like Paul says, if I'm pardoned, then then you ought to be able to do like God in the Spirit. God said, "I'll blot out your, your transgression, and I'll remember them no more. I'll throw them in the sea of forgiveness." But we got to hold on, like it's a bullet to our M16. Yeah, because if she say this, I'm gonna remind her. You remember what you did? Listen, can I bless you? When we offend somebody, the last person to forget what we did is us. I don't need to be reminded. I need to be forgiven. I don't need to be held hostage. I need to be pardoned. Here's the, here's the next thing. Watch what he says. He says, now there's a purpose that has to be pardoned. Then the third thing he says is, you have to remember in Christ we are partners. Oh, can I show it to you? 
Look at verse 17. <laughs> In verse 17, he said, if, the, if then you count me as a partner, receive him what you say. Y'all see that? Now, now watch what he's saying. He's saying that if forgiveness and pardon has taken place, Y'all ain't got to be buddy-buddy at everybody's house, but in ministry, you ought to be able to be partners. Put self aside so that the kingdom can advance. Put your feelings aside so that the kingdom can advance. One of the worst things that we could do is, is to show our children in our marriages and relationship how divided we really are. We just stay together because we're in an arrangement. And we're not partners. Because when you're partners, even in marriage, when you are partner, you are bound by a spirit that's above your head. God. And there's only one way to make it work. He has to be the head and he has to be the director and the orchestrator of the direction in which you're going. Listen to what he said. Don't receive him as a slave. I see the fellowship in the spirit in him. And in order for him to make that statement, he himself had to be in the spirit. What, what am I saying? This is what I'm saying. When you get to the place that you can say that for the sake of the gospel, we are partners. You can stop right there. I might not like your antics, but since life ain't about me, it's about him. And since my life is not my own, it's about him. Then what I'm willing to do is set my flesh upon the subjection so that the spirit of the Lord will work through both of us so that we can work together. How can you say I'm doing something for the Lord and roll your eye in church at the same time? No, let, come on, let's just keep it real. If any man Not any woman, if anybody be in Christ, you should not act the same. You can't. That if your flesh supersedes, if your spirit supersedes your flesh, why you can still act the same way and have no remorse? Certain things, I have listened to people say, listen, not in the street. And out jump, out shout, out scream, out holler, out praise, out worship, anybody. But then would turn right around with the same mouth and tell somebody off. Which says, who's zooming who? While you think you can fool man, you cannot fool God. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. What's that, what does that mean? That means everybody that say they are who they are. And show you something else. You don't have to call them out. You just keep being who God has called you to be. Know what spirit you're connected to. If folk want to be your friend, know what spirit you are connected to. If they want to be in your circle, know what spirit. You have to know, though, that labor among you. And what he's talking about, know, though, that's either of the kingdom of darkness or of the kingdom of light. You have to know. But here's the thing. Darkness can't call out light. But light can call out darkness. So he says, listen. That if they're partners, he says, give him a chance because he has some light in him. God don't dealt with him. He's godless sorry, and he's not the same man that lived. He's different. But not only that, watch, I'm in verse 18, and I'm gone. He says, now, we're going to get to verse 18. The first thing he says is, receive him just like it was me. So he says to 
um, Philemon, he says, listen, you'll, you'll know it's me because he's going to act like me. And y'all know who Paul was. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So he says, if you got Christ in him, in you, he says, you're going to recognize him because the same spirit I got, that's the same spirit he had. But then he gets it because the next thing he says, he deals with purpose, he deals with partner, he deals with partner, but then he deals with payback. Can I give it to you and go home? Here it is. I'm in verse, uh, I'm in verse 18. He said, but if he has wronged you or owe you, listen, anything, Listen to what he says. Put that on who? On, on my account. Listen to what he said. If he owe you anything, if he wrong you, he says whatever it is, whether it's he wronged you or whether he owe you, he said, I'm going to pay you back. So we got to deal with the payback. Wife, you don't have to pay them back when God says, I'm going to pay you back. Now, I want, to, I want to show you something that blew my mind. This blew my mind. But watch this. Would, would you go to... Um, Verse 19, he says, I, Paul, am writing you with my own hand. Paul said, this ain't forgery. I'm doing this. He said, I will repay. Watch this. He says, not to mention, I ain't trying to bring it up. But you must be don't forgot. You owe me. Oh, yes, y'all see that? Paul says, while you around here tripping about what a missus did to you, it's funny that you owe me, but you ain't never brought that up. So Paul gives him the golden rule. Paul says, do unto others. As you, you want a missus to pay you back, Paul say, pay me back then. Yeah, how, how quick, uh, y'all, you see, y'all, ooh, that was a shout right there for me, Ms. Ms. Nigga. Listen, he says this. Paul says, I understand what happened because in his conversion, he told me that not only did he escape, which was wrong, but he took some money that wasn't his. Paul says, but I watched God change him. And if I can forgive him because the relationship between me and you then when I send him back, you forgive him. He said, and if that's not enough, I'm going to convict you. He says, if he wrong you or owe you anything, I'm going to pay you back. Put that on my account. Can, can, can I give it to you? When Christ died and you mess up, instead of you having to answer for the charges, Christ says to God, put that on my account. Y all, y all, y all. So if Christ says, I got an open account with your name on it, and when you mess up and the enemy brings an accusation against you to my father, I got to tell my father, I shed enough blood to pay for that. I, God I already paid for that. So if we can remember that, we can stop holding grudges. We can be quick to forgive. Because of this, we owe the Lord. We do. We owe him. And the last thing we want God to say is, okay, since you want Deacon Whitfield to pay you back, remember this, Keith. You owe me. Can I challenge the church to practice forgiveness that every time you want to hold on to it, every time you want to strike back, can I challenge the church? Remember, you owe the Lord. Because he graciously forgave you. You owe the Lord. Even David realized he owed the Lord. David said, what shall I render? Unto God for all these benefits. Everyone in here, if you woke up this morning, you owe the Lord. If the blood is still running warm in your vein, you owe the Lord. If you have activity up your limbs, you owe the Lord. If God is regulating your mind, you owe the Lord. What, what do we owe him, Keith? I'm glad you asked. You owe him to forgive one another, let some stuff go so that God can open the windows and bless you. No, no, for real. Go back and say, I'm sorry. Free yourself. Don't become 
a prisoner in your own mind. Practice forgiveness. Why did he, why did he call that practice forgiveness? Because in order for Ominous to go back to Philemon, he couldn't go based on what Paul says. He goes because he forgave himself. If you want to free yourself, forgive yourself first. Practice forgiving you. Don't let the enemy hold guilt over your head. I messed up, but the blood. I'm jacked up. Come on, but but the blood. Yeah, yeah. I don't always do what's right. I fall and I backslide, but but the blood. That's why the summons came up with the song. What? Can wash away my sins. Huh? What can make me whole? What? What you, again? What's the answer? And if the blood does that, the blood will convict you to forgive, let go, and move forward. God bless you. Amen.